Jimmy Fallon came to be the head coach of the Huskies. Coach Fallon had many successful years. Part of the end zone where Mark Patterson makes the catch with just 34 seconds to go. Paul, great time! Yes! Chris Paul get to the end zone! Touchdown, Washington! It was the combination of playing, practicing, and winning here. The fact that uh, I got a chance to, to go to two Rose Bowls uh, while I was here in 61. I was a redshirt freshman, and in 63 were the two experiences in my playing time. And those are the proud points. The best moment that I've ever experienced at Husky Stadium was beating USC my junior year and uh, Marinovich and SC coming to town and you know the, the old saying all I saw was purple and that was the first time that I really had seen our defense stepped up because my freshman and sophomore year USC had been the team to beat and not only did we take them down we just dominated them. Watch the throw, here come the Huskies, got them again. Husky Stadium. There's an old cliche about famous places. If these walls could only talk, oh, the stories they would tell. You don't have to worry about that at Husky Stadium because people come for moments they'll be talking about for the rest of their lives. What did that draw? And all the way down inside the three, down to the two, and it is a first down for the Huskies. There he is, Turner. Touchdown, Washington. Ed Cunningham played center on perhaps the best Husky roster Don James ever put together. And the greatest matchup for the 1990 season was with powerhouse USC. The Trojans were ranked fifth in the nation when they showed up at Montlake. Nine yard line and what a play. It was probably 100 degrees on the field. And I think we'd lost three or four in a row to USC. So it was just this kind of release of the past, the recent past, which hadn't been so good. And it was like the team and the building both rose up to that moment. Tommy Smith down to the 22-yard line, and that is the first second interception of Todd Maridovich today and for the year. I'll never forget the feeling. And you know, I come off the field, my mom's standing there, and she's just, she's, you know, I mean, she's from back east. She doesn't know Husky football. She's got all her purple on, and. You know, she's been, she can barely speak because she's been screaming as loud as she can because everyone else was screaming as loud as they could. And for me, that was the moment where it was like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be playing for this team. I'm supposed to be at this building. For us, we had such a good team of good guys, guys who liked each other and worked hard. It was just confirmation that if you do things the right way and you're good people and you work hard, these, these are the results you can have. And the building was just staggering that day. When Greg Lewis finished his running back career with the Huskies in 1990, he was voted Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. The defining moment for me was um, probably more than just one play, but one particular game my senior year when we were playing the uh, University of California uh, at Berkeley here. And um, the reason I remember so vividly is that day I had the opportunity to break several Husky, Husky rushing records. And it was like every play I ran the ball, there was a new record that I broke. And the PA announced, would know, announced Greg Lewis just broke the single season yardage. Greg Lewis just broke the most 100 yard games. Greg Lewis just went 11 consecutive 100 yard games. Greg Lewis just ran this number of touchdowns. So for me, it was a real exciting game because I never used to listen to what was being said by the PA announcer, but because we were beating them pretty bad. <laughs> I think the final score was 42 to seven. Uh, I had an opportunity to kind of notice the surroundings and when he kept announcing my name, I started to pay attention a little bit. And it just made me feel good because every time 
uh, he said something, the crowd would acknowledge it, and I knew my family was there and they got to experience it um, and see me have that success. So it kind of defined my career. Um, when I look back at where I started as a freshman and how far I had come by my senior year, so it was a really proud moment for me. Jim Mora has lived and breathed football his entire life, and his first true test of his Husky loyalty came as a kid along the sidelines. My dad came with Don James as his defensive coordinator. They'd been at the University of Colorado together, and so we moved to the Pacific Northwest. And then I was fortunate enough to be a ball boy. I'm probably one of the few people can say that they were a ball boy in Husky Stadium, played football games in Husky Stadium, coached as a college graduate assistant in Husky Stadium, and coached NFL games in Husky Stadium. I've got these, a lot of these ball boy stories, maybe more, too many ball boy stories, and not enough playing stories, but we were playing Indiana, and we were beating them late in the fourth quarter and I was ball boying on their sideline and I was on about the 35 yard line wearing my red and white striped ball boy shirt and uh, we recovered a fumble, I think it might have been Michael Jackson that recovered a fumble and I jumped up and said, you know, we got it! And the next thing I do, I feel, is a swift kick to the butt and I turn around it's Indiana's president who says, shut the hell up, kid. Remember where you are. You know, I said, hey, I know where I am, I'm in Husky Stadium, okay? This is our house, not your house. And uh, that was, uh, I'll never forget that. Scoring the touchdown, doing a little shimmy dance on the way in, then going to shake the fence. I mean, I tell you, shaking that fence was one of the most intense moments of my life. quarterback the dogs in the early to mid 80s but he caught husky fever long before that we lived in the north end of seattle and and so we'd drive by there on montlake and i can remember of course at that time it was just the south stand but it just seems so uh, monolithic you know for a, a young kid a six killer was really making his mark the, the feeling of course we didn't have the seahawks uh, we didn't have the mariners who were the sonics were there but uh, he had the sense that this was as big as it got. And so, um, you know, so for some of my later experiences to have, you, you know, the, the reflection as a really young child of, of, of what, how grandiose this place is, it was, uh, it was really um, impactful to have been part of it. In 1984, the Huskies played a nationally ranked Houston team with Millen at the helm. So the first play of the game, we had talked all week about running a double reverse pass. And it was just so contrary to the Don James nature. So there was a conservatism that you were aware of, certainly as the quarterback for the Huskies, that field position was valuable and, and we're not taking chances. And yet on the first play of the game, we wanted to run this double reverse pass. We hold Houston on the first series, they punt, and now we get the ball and it's right around midfield. And I'm assuming that we're gonna run this double verse pass. And I walk up to Coach James, because ultimately, of course, it's his decision. And I've never seen him smile before in a game, but that's the only time he had this big smile. He was like a kid, a kid on, on Christmas morning. He said, yeah, 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 run the, run, run the double verse pass. He was, he, was, he was really excited to run this thing. So we go out there and, you know, I toss it to Jock Robertson and Jock Robertson tosses it to Danny Green and Danny Green wings the right back around and he laterals it to me and I throw it to Patterson and, and we complete the thing down the field. And as we're walking up the next huddle, the, the whole student section is, stands up and they're going, Rose Bull, Rose Bull, Rose Bull. By the end of the day, Millen led the Huskies to a 35 to seven romp over Houston. Joe Jarzinka was such a skilled football player that he played five different positions over his career as a dog. His role as a punt returner on special teams set school records, and fans knew that little Joe would never fair catch a ball. We were playing Cal Berkeley. We were winning, but it was still a pretty close game, and, and uh, their punter ended up going to the NFL, and he, he, he would uh, ordinarily out 
kick his coverage. So he thumped one and I had to turn and run back and typically a punt returner isn't supposed to go beyond the 10 yard line. Um, but again, I, by that point I had earned enough trust with the coaching staff where they kind of, you know, let me, they, they gave me a long leash in that regard. And so I had to go um, inside and I, I think I, I might have caught it at the six or six or seven, something like that. And, uh, and so it was, I had about 10 or 15 yards till the first guy even got there. And uh, once again, my team is just lining up perfectly. And I take off and shake one guy, shake another guy, you know, boom, sutter step. And next thing I know, I'm staring at the punter. And I'm thinking to myself, holy smokes, that's the, <laughs> that's the punter. I know that guy. And, and they aren't usually the, the most graceful of athletes. So I knew I wasn't going to try and get fancy with them and just make, it, make one move. And made, made one move, broke to the wide side of the field. And, and I remember staring up at the Jumbotron and watching myself uh, to see how far back the guy was behind me. Because although I'm a quick player and very fast in short distances, the long distance, yeah, not so much. And so I was trying to, trying to make sure that I wasn't going to get caught from behind because I would have never heard the end of that. Um, so then scoring the touchdown, doing a little shimmy dance on the way in, then going to shake the fence uh, right at the end. I mean, I tell you, shaking that fence was one of the most... One of the most intense moments of my life. It was a, it was like a release of everything that I had done. It was it was the first touchdown, uh, punt return touchdown I had scored. It was like a release of all the hard work and all the pain and all the the tears and emotion. Everything was was released right there, and the crowd was going nuts. I mean, the people on the other side of the fence are slacking the fence, and I'm shaking it, and everybody's barking, and then team comes around and piles on. I mean, it was it was insane. And then I had to go kick the extra point. It was a statement game of we are Washington, we are still here, it doesn't matter what you try to do to kill us, we are here. I'll never forget that day, it was incredible. I suppose with my dad being a high school football coach and I can remember him dragging me along to a few games and uh, we sat in the, the west uh, end of the of the stadium, so you were kind of far up there. And it, it wasn't the best uh, sight lines, but um, certainly some awesome memories uh, as a kid uh, of just uh, how big the stadium was, um, the crowd, um, everything about uh, Husky football. It was the big time, certainly even for for a young kid growing up. And then, you know, going through high school, getting recruited, uh, coming to a lot of games here. Uh, throughout my high school career uh, was certainly a lot of fun too and uh, it, it truly was a, a part of my decision to want to come here and, and play in this stadium. Damon Heward became the Husky starting quarterback in 1993. His fondest memory is day one on the job. We beat Stanford. Um, Don James had just uh, stepped down as head coach 13 days earlier and it was a real trying time and a really good Stanford team was coming in here, coached by legendary Bill Walsh. And uh, they had uh, called us mercenaries. And you know, I was the new young starting sophomore quarterback and, and uh, no one was sure where you know, our minds would be with our head coach uh, just stepping down. But um, leaving that game victorious, walking up Hus Husky Tunnel, it was like, man, this, this is what it's all about. This is why I came to the school. For that moment, for that afternoon, for that victory, for this feeling that you have, you just go out there with your team and, and put a beating on someone and uh, what a special, special feeling. As a former UW basketball star, it's no wonder Elise Woodward stands out as she delivers color commentary along the sidelines at Husky football games. And she never forgets the very first time she came to a game during her recruitment trip to the UW. The exact same day, Damon Heward took the field. I'll never forget reading the comments from Bill Walsh, the negative comments about the UW program, and I wasn't even a member of Washington yet, and how offended I was by that. And the crowd that day, the energy in Husky Stadium, and the, the hatred for Bill Walsh and those comments. I mean, you could feel the energy that day in Husky Stadium. And they were both top 15 in the nation, and it was Jim Lambright's first game. And you saw him walking down the tunnel, and you saw how fired up Washington was, and um, the crowd was electric that day. And they stomped Stanford that game. And I think for the crowd, and for the fans, and for the players, and everybody, it was just kind of, um, 
it, it was a statement game of we are Washington, we are still here, it doesn't matter what you try to do to kill us, we are here, and we just thumped Stanford, I think it was 31 to 14 that day, and I just remember from then on, I said, man, they, you know, the toughness that day, and just, you know, the pride that was shown by the fans and by the players and by the coaching staff, I'll, I'll never forget that day, it was incredible. My favorite moments are kind of being in the huddle and knowing that we're, we're clicking on defense and things are going good and looking back, I get to look back, there's nine guys looking back at us, looking into all their faces and eyes and fire the sweat, it's, it's great, it's the best. Dick Baird grew up a Husky fan, but somehow he lost his way and went to play for the Cougars in college. He officially joined the Husky program as a recruiting coordinator in the mid-80s, perhaps to atone for his lapse to WSU. But those Cougar days made for some fond memories. My senior year we came in, we'd only won one game, and I'm the captain of the lowly Cougars, and uh, we won in Husky Stadium 9-7 to when a kid, um, Don Martin was his name, missed a chip shot field goal, 19-yard field goal, at the end of the game and we win nine to seven, otherwise we lose 10 to nine. And I got to think that the gods just felt sorry for us. We'd lost eight in a row to the Huskies. But for me to accept the Apple Cup and the first victory that Washington State had had in an eight year period, and, uh, uh, and then I went to walk up the tunnel and Coach Owens put his arm around me and I looked and I mean, because I was from Roosevelt High School right next door. And he says, we made a mistake. We should have recruited you. And that meant more to me after that game because I really thought I could have played for him. But it was okay. I mean, I, I had a great experience playing against him, and we, we finally won. <laughs> and, and that was the end of my uh, collegiate career and got to kiss Miss Washington and shake Governor Dan Evans' hand and take the Apple Cup, you know, just which I expect the Huskies to do every time now. So I, I really had, you know, kind of 20, 20, 20 year gaps. My middle gap, I was a Cougar. The first part up until I went over there, I was a Husky. And then after I went to work here in 84, I've been a Husky ever since. For Baird, his most personal attachment to Husky Stadium is when it's completely empty. In recruiting, I used to take a recruit with the empty stadium, I says, come on, I want to show you something. You know, I'm, I'm trying to kill some time, but I'm also trying to impress him. And if I had a beautiful day where, where the sun was out and the mountain was out, you know, I'd go to the north side and I said, come on, let's go up and take the kid all the way to the top of the stadium and sit down. If the mountain was out, I, I would situate him just in the perfect spot. I just think it's one of the prettiest stadiums in the country. Dave Hoffman was an All-American linebacker for the Dogs, and when visiting teams rolled into Husky Stadium, Hoffman and company would roll them right back. I remember playing against SC and having uh, five or six tackles for loss uh, and uh, in a game that was on the scoreboard. Um, looked fairly close, but really on the field wasn't close at all. We could have played for three weeks and they wouldn't have uh, scored a touchdown on us. Got a lot of great memories playing out there with my buddies and, you know, Clifford, Chico, Jaime, um, and all my D-lineman guys. And of course, I, I played a lot with my brother and that's a special thing that always, that pops up in my head a lot as I'm reminiscing about the good old days and how lucky and blessed I am to have played with him and uh, be out there. And that was, uh, that was, that was special. And looking back at the huddle as a linebacker, looking back, my favorite moments are kind of being in the huddle and knowing that we're, we're clicking on defense and things are going good. And looking back, I get to look back next to my other inside backer with all the, with the rest of the defense. So there's nine guys looking back at us, looking into all their faces and eyes and the fire, the sweat, blood dripping off their foreheads. That's, um, it's, it's great, it's the best. But if I'm being real honest here, the, uh, the, the greatest moment for me in Husky Stadium happened in the month of July. That's when my wife and I said I do at the 50 yard line and got married here at Husky Stadium in 1997. That one will go down perhaps as Bob Rondo's greatest moment ever at Husky Stadium. Oh, 
1977, the Huskies were playing a top-ranked USC team. Quarterback Warren Moon was having one heck of a day, and the Huskies were looking at a big win. With the clock winding down, all Moon wanted to do was protect the football. Everybody's expecting Joe Steele or somebody to get the football, but Coach James wanted to keep the ball in my hands. He didn't want to risk getting a fumble or anything like that, so he felt confident enough that for me to have the football in my hands, so we ran a couple of quarterback sweeps, and I was able to uh, you know, find a little hole, and I ducked underneath a player, and next thing you know, I'm coming out the backside, and I end up going 71 yards for a touchdown, and. Uh, Probably one of the slowest 71-yard runs in the history of Pac-8 football, but I got to the end zone, and that's all that mattered. <laughs> Motion out of the backfield from Muster to the far side. Two-step drop from Buckley over the middle. Picked off Joe Kelly to the 35-30 on the run back to the 20. Joe Kelly going in to the 5. Touchdown, Washington! For over 20 years, Bob Rondo has been the voice of Husky football, calling all the dog action as he sees it on the radio. Rondo is a walking, talking encyclopedia on Husky football, and he's married to the Husky program in more ways than one. Well, there have been almost countless moments uh, at Husky Stadium uh, as we go back again, the, the wins over USC, the, the defining victories, uh, the, that win in 1977 that got Washington rolling, that uh, got Warren Moon established, they got Don James established, they got the Huskies to the Rose Bowl. You, you don't forget those kinds of things. You know, watching the, the national championship team be as good as it was, uh, watching various players go from, uh, you know, incoming freshmen, maybe not of great note, to developing into great players. Those are all moments that, uh, that I will cherish. But if I'm being real honest here, the, uh, the, the greatest moment for me in Husky Stadium happened in the month of July. In 1997, July 26th, on a sunny afternoon in Seattle, one of those kinds of days in Seattle, Washington, you know, the, the picture postcard day that makes Husky Stadium the place it is, and that's when my wife and I said I do at the 50-yard line and got married here at Husky Stadium in 1997. It was Molly's idea, by the way, to, uh, to have the wedding here, but uh, that one will go down perhaps as Bob Rondo's greatest moment ever at Husky Stadium. Next time on Greatest Moments at Husky Stadium. We beat USC here. That was a special moment on a lot of fronts. You know, any chance you get to play against your mentor and then beat your mentor, that's pretty special. And then for the game to go the way it did, and then to have, you know, over 50,000 people rush the field and be on the field. And I have to admit, it was a little bit scary just trying to get out of there. But what an amazing moment. That one holds a special place.